Good morning and welcome to worship here at Mount Olivet Lutheran Church of Plymouth. And I want to say Happy New Year. This is the very first day of the church year, and we do not start with resolutions. We start um, with ancient promises of a Messiah who will come to save the world. And um, all creation has waited a long time, and uh, we will wait for four weeks until that baby Jesus is born and God comes in flesh and blood. And um, it's a very holy time of year, sacred, meaningful. Uh, you will see the sanctuary adorned in the color blue that is both sky and sea as we dive right into this season and the music and the prayers. Our Gospel of Matthew, we start uh, this year and uh, we don't start easy. And Pastor Kristen knows that already. <laughs> um, as we uh, hear again um, this call in the gospel uh, to uh, prepare and be ready for God to come. So if you are online, wherever uh, today finds you, Advent greetings to you as well. So I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin with our call to worship. We come to prepare the way. The hope of Christ, the peace of Christ. So hear the invitation that echoes down the centuries. Awake to the thin places and to miracles that grow. We invite Marilyn up front to light the Advent, first Advent candle. With a candle lit, we call on God's presence during our time of confession and forgiveness. Let us confess our sins, trusting in the tender mercies of God. God of new beginnings, we confess that we have not welcomed your presence among us. We have strayed from your paths. We prepare for war instead of peace. We dishonor one another and your creation. Turn our hearts to you and set us again on the way of your love, that we may bear fruit worthy of repentance and welcome your coming among us. Amen. People of God, a new thing is growing in our midst, a tender branch a living rain. By water and the Spirit, you are joined to this wonder. You have put on Christ, and your sins have been washed away. Rejoice, for God's love is near. Amen. We sing together. <laughs>
Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray together. Unexpected God, your advent disrupts us. Wake us from drowsy worship, from the sleep that neglects love, and the sedative of misdirected frenzy. Awaken us now to your coming and bend our angers into your peace. Amen. You may be seated. Taken from Isaiah chapter 2. The word that Isaiah, son of Amos, saw concerning the Judah and Jerusalem. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of the mountains and shall be raised above the hills. All the nations shall stream to it. Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between the nations and shall arbitrate for many peoples. They shall beat their swords into plowshares and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn war any more. O house of Jacob, come, let us walk in the light of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord of life. And a reading from the Gospel of Matthew, the 24th chapter. But about that day and hour, no one knows, neither the angels of heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. For as the days of Noah were, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day Noah entered the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came and swept them all away. So too will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two will be in the field, one will be taken and one will be left. Two women will be grinding meal together, one will be taken and one will be left. Keep awake, therefore, for you do not know on what day your Lord is coming. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known in what part of the night the thief was coming, he would have stayed awake and would not have let his house be broken into. Therefore, you also must be ready for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. Word of God, word of life. Good morning. Many of you are familiar, I think, with the serenity prayer, usually attributed to Reinhold Niebuhr. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. If the serenity prayer asks us to accept the things that we cannot change, our gospel text this morning asks us to accept that we cannot control or fully know the ways in which God enters this broken world of ours. This comes as a challenging message to most of us this morning. We, who are likely already tipping toward December 25th, we who are all part of a push to make it to the finish line of Christmas, when we can create a snapshot where love and contentment 
and family and wonder and nostalgia reign. I'm not criticizing the powerful cultural messages around this time of year per se, but rather trying to highlight how profound our human yearnings are to plan and create and manage a future of our own making. And so in the midst of all of this, our gospel reading this morning disrupts us. We are all primed to enter another cozy advent where storylines are familiar and the path to get to the birth of Emmanuel is lined in blue and white candles. And instead, we encounter images of Jesus sneaking around back at an unexpected hour, a thief prowling around in the middle of the night. Well, so much for a cozy advent. It is a comfort, I think, that the disciples, and even Jesus for that matter, are trying to come to grips with the same uncertain future that we are. The time when Jesus will die is so very close at hand in, the, in this part of the story, and they are all grieving it already. And the disciples have a profound question. When, Jesus, will you be coming back? You have promised to come again. So when exactly will that be, and what should we be doing with ourselves in the meantime? Jesus' answer leaves a little to be desired. He says, no one, not even me, knows. No one, not even me, knows, he says. So here we are at the beginning of Advent, trying once again to embrace the hope of the season that through the coming of the baby Jesus, the world is about to turn. And I know you, like me, are praying for this. You're praying for his coming because the world desperately needs to turn, doesn't it? To turn away from the things that diminish and destroy life to turn away from violent shootings and hate crimes, from wars and the dislocation of people, from an economic model that forever favors the haves instead of the have-nots. We get an answer from Jesus about when this turning will all take place, but it's a little light on the details. He simply says it's coming God is near. Keep awake for it. Keep awake. And so there it is, our reason to hope. Jesus is still hopeful on that day in Jerusalem, that day when his death is all but certain. On that day, he's trying to prepare his disciples for what is to come, and he himself admits that even he cannot fully understand the coming of the kingdom of God. And still, even on that day, Jesus demonstrates hope. His hope for the future was alive and present, even on a day when all seemed as though it was lost. And so we can learn from him to breathe in and embody his hope for ourselves and for one another and for the world. We lit a candle on the Advent wreath this morning to represent this enduring hope that God has come near and continues to come near to us in the dailiness of life. Sometimes during Advent and Christmas, the dichotomy and language of light and dark can be restrictive. There's a long history in the church of using words like light and white and bright to describe goodness, and words like dark and black and shadow to mean the opposite. 
But if we are to take our gospel passage seriously this morning, none of us has a clear handle on when and where God shows up. So we don't light this candle to say that being in the light is something always positive and the goal, or that walking in darkness is somehow flawed and where we shouldn't be in the moment. But rather, we light this candle to say God promises to show up in all the places and all the ways and all the shades and in-between times of living. Last week, I had the privilege of presiding at a healing service for members of the West Suburban Grief Coalition. I know from several conversations that this organization has been an amazing source of caring and support for many in our own community. One woman at the service told me that the Grief Coalition was a club she never expected to join. And yet, there was God coming near in the midst of the unexpected and never wished for. In the word, in the music, in the saying of names, those beloved ones lost too soon. In the praying and in the tears as well. Another unexpected visitor showed up at an unexpected hour in my office last week. His recent grief and loss, too overwhelming for words. He needed to talk to God, that much he knew. And visiting me to pray, me, a pastor he didn't even know, was important to him in that moment, on that afternoon. See, God's inbreaking in this world is most often unexpected. So what if, instead of imagining God as a thief in the middle of the night, we imagine God as a loving visitor, due for a visit any time now, the details of which remain unknown? How would we keep awake for our friend, watching, waiting, open and eager for signs of their coming, ready for their arrival with food in the pantry and a teapot on the stove, whether it be day or night or any of the thin times in between. When our friend finally does arrive, how might we invite them into our well-planned world? We light our first Advent candle this morning not to lay claim to the way and timing by which our Lord will come near to us, but to remind ourselves in hope that whatever way we turn toward the past, the present, or the future, God has been and continues to be near. We stay awake in this season because of this promise we watch for this promise in breaking in ways that we can just barely glimpse. And we, we, we walk forward in this promise, step by step, always together. It is Advent, and Christ has come. Christ is coming, and Christ is coming again. Praise be to God. Amen. And please stand as we sing together.
as we're awakened again to God's word and deep promises, we confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he's seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Over the last 12 weeks, instead of sharing the peace, we've had conversations with each other and introduced ourselves, especially to people we don't know as much. We're taking a little break from that during the season of Advent, um, but don't you fret, it'll come back another time. Um, but I invite you um, not only to extend your peace to someone you may not know and those around you, um, but also introduce yourself. If you don't know someone's name, please extend that as well as we share and we connect in community. And now may the peace of God be with you all. Let's both share and receive peace, friends online. Peace to you, and you may peace in the comments. Peace. Uh, for our offering, I want to introduce uh, Mount Olivet coming into the age of online giving. We are now on Venmo. Let's hear it. And it's not only a QR code, it's a blue QR code for the season of Advent. But I invite you to take out your phones and test it out today. Um, you can give online. Just uh, look. It'll bring you to uh, Mopli. And that's just a way for us to um, access giving in a, in a more um, intuitive way, I would say. But I, I want to say a deep thanks for all the ways that you invest in my, Mount Olivet financially to bring about worship in all that we do here and uh, create the future forward. We're in the midst of um, just finalizing our gifts for the next year. And then you may have heard we received a legacy gift and additional COVID money. So we are just $325,000 away from paying off our $1.1 million mortgage, which we hope to do in March. If you haven't given, um, I invite you to uh, prayerfully consider that, funding our way to the future and uh, this future of hope. So thank you for that. And uh, choir, we now receive your beautiful gifts.
choir and all our amazing musicians under Angela's leadership, we're so grateful for you. And uh, we now pray over all these offerings. Eternal God, you make the desert bloom and send springs of water to thirsty ground. Receive our gifts and make us messengers of your mercy and love for all in need of your healing and justice. We ask this through Christ our Savior. Amen. The Lord be with you. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You comforted your people with the promise of the Redeemer, through whom you will make all things new. In the day when he comes to judge the world in righteousness, and so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, broke it, and gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this. For the remembrance of me. That spirit awakens us and gathers us together as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. It's time to eat. There is a place for you at God's table. And God disrupts the world on the night before Jesus died and said, in the midst of fear and betrayal and evil, Sitting amidst the table, I come to you in love, and I come to feed you. And make this something that you do often and regularly to remember that God breaks into this world, has not left us on our own, and calls us to go and feed. So however that looks in your life right now, be fed and feed Simply open your hands to receive this grace that continues to come with this promise of a Messiah who is being born in you. So please come forward. If you are online, hear these words. The body of Christ is given for you and the blood of Christ shed for you. For those at church, the wafer is gluten-free, wine is red, 
grape juice is lighter, you're also welcome to come up on the kneelers and pray after you receive the meal. Please come forward now. The feast is prepared. Body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. Now we pray. Uh, we've been forgiven and fed, received the deep promises of God's story once again, 
And now we speak and we trust and we embody before we get sent back out into the places uh, where we live and move and work and learn and serve. And so if you are online, I invite you uh, just to type your prayers in the comments and we will read those at the end. For those at church, I will uh, start uh, with an opening and then I just invite you to raise your hand for your prayer. I will speak that in your community. Uh, we'll join you in that prayer. Awake us, God. Um, our prayer of the day said the frantic frenzy among us. Way too, ma way too many emails and texts um, luring us to buy stuff, uh, which is real and true in gift giving. Um, but turn our hearts, God, to name first all that we have been given and for us uh, to know that the only way to be generous is to be generous. So for all those places in the world that don't have enough with food, with love, with security, with justice, send us forth to offer what we have to start a pile of mercy and hope in the world. And uh, be with us in this season of Advent as we hear these ancient promises uh, for Matthew to speak at the end of his gospel to say, be ready, Christ is coming and coming again. And for us to know that that love is about saving us in the world. So hear the prayers that we have come to these places and people. God in your mercy. What prayers do you have today? Ruth. All right, so Ben, we're praying for your brother Floyd, a friend of this congregation as well. Uh, we've been praying for uh, Floyd to have made it through surgery for his ongoing healing, for the faith and the trust of your family each and every day. Um, God, uh, find Floyd in this moment in the days I've had. Bring love and care to him for healing. God, in your mercy. Yeah, John. Mm -hmm. Tammy. A prayer of gratitude as you are shoulder to shoulder with your dad. Uh, for taking such good care of him, for you to worship together. Uh, John, for you to be able to name and notice that love that is so very close that comes. And for that to keep coming, um, for that love to be reciprocal in so many ways. God, hear this prayer. God, in your mercy. Yeah, Barb. Barb. Yes, and I remember praying uh, with you last week as your family was traveling to you, and you know what? This life is all about the plan Bs and Cs and Ds, um, so not quite as you expected, um, but for your family to be fed, and it sounds like healing um, came as well for your granddaughter who was sick, uh, for safe travels, coming in and going out always um, in this life. And again, Barb, for you to name and notice the gifts around you, even if it's not as we expected. God, in your mercy. Uh, received a, a text message that John Olson uh, needed to go to the hospital uh, to care for his heart. Um, and so, uh, John, uh, for your heart uh, to rest and be back in um, a more gentler um, heartbeat. Uh, we're missing you today in, in the choir and all the places that you serve here. Um, but trust in that rest and healing that will come to you. And Kurt, uh, so good to see you. Uh, today and to be next to Anne 
uh, for your ongoing healing and love to come close. Um, just giving thanks for your presence and worship today. God, in your mercy. And friends online, I will see. I'm not seeing any prayers, uh, but you keep typing, and uh, we will extend those prayers to you as well. Uh, God, for all these things that we have prayed for specifically today, for that hope that comes so uh, directly in this season of Advent as we wait uh, to hear again that you don't stay away, that you come close for all the places where you need to be in this world, uh, where we need that love to come forth um, and have that spread and grow in each of us. Amen. Um, some prayers for you. So um, out on the windows, the question is, what gives you hope? And I invite you to write that on the window. Don't do it for you. Do it for someone else. Because oftentimes, someone else needs to hear what is giving, um, giving each of us hope when it feels like it's dim. So um, permission given to write on the windows, and please do. Um, again, the season of Advent, there's so much going on. Um, there's concerts coming up, uh, both in worship and Billy McLaughlin. Um, Pace is leading an Advent calendar devotion. Um, I'm leading an Advent prayer on Sunday nights. If that's something that's of interest to you, you can sign up online still. You can still do it. It starts tonight or talk to me about that. And um, there's also ways of giving on the trees. All you need to do is take the little card and scan the code. This is our way specifically for families who do not have enough to be able to give gifts to their families that we show up as a community and say we want to be a part of abundance and joy and hope uh, for kids and family alike. So uh, please respond as you're able because that deadline is approaching as well. And um, happy Advent. I invite you to stand as we close in song. <laughs> eternal word who dwells with us in Jesus and who holds us in the grace of the Holy Spirit. Bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Christ is near. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.